to Oregon. <laughs> I'm Katherine Hardwick, I'm directing the movie Twilight, and we're up here in St. Helens, Oregon. When I read the book, I thought, wow, this lady, Stephanie Myers, has done a great job of capturing what it feels like to just be this crazy teenage girl that's just falling madly and obsessively in love with this guy, this super cool, bad guy. And I liked the guy, too. He was interesting, strange, drove fast cars, you know, could climb trees and leap out of buildings and but he had like a lot of like other interesting traits and existential issues that he was dealing with you know about his heart and soul and his humanity and what he'd lost so it had a lot of deep things that were really interesting to me. I was making a movie in Portland in the fall and uh, Catherine Hardwick who I had worked with before and produced her last movie called and said she was trying to make this movie Twilight which I knew the book series because I tried to buy it about a year and a half ago and found out that the rights were already gone um, it had become a huge phenomenon and uh, the studio she was making it for, Eric Feig, he, you know, he had called and he said, you know, we could use some help because I know you just shot up there and you know the locations and the crew and everything and you've worked with Catherine before, there's a lot of things that you can do to help us sort of get this going. We have a December release date, we got a lot to pull off. And so um, I came up in, uh, in, in February and began working with her in, in, in pre-production and, uh, you know, just dived in. It's been, a, it's been a ride. For me, right when I read the book, I thought, oh, this is great. It's like you really feel what it feels like to be this girl, and you really hear her voice. And now, and that that's words on a page, and now I want to make it visual for everyone to see it. And I want to find these locations that you read about, the drippy moss and the trees, and just show you, like, stunning stuff and put these characters that we love in a visually you know fabulous environment and show you that action and just take you on a wild ride so in a way we get to take you even further than the book does because we get to go up in the treetops with Edward we get to you know do just some crazy beautiful stuff and our camera gets to like spin around take you out in that meadow you know all this kind of take you on the ride. The opening sequence is about you know uh, Edward hunting or you know with the Greek vampire they hunting animal for life they don't kill people so they hunting animals so the beginning is the opening is the hunting stuff so it kind of like we shot something like a, almost like a you know documentary it's like a discovery channel you know or animal panic it's really beautiful sequence with the deer and then the tree the tree the tree is really beautiful and I think the the finale is very cool you know the ending when um, when Edward fight with James, you know, and there's a really good fight scene, like a lot of wire work, and um, we damage the whole, you know, ballet studio, you know, that we build a set and then we crash everything. We crash the window, we crash the wall, we crash the ground, we do everything. That's a beautiful sequence. And then one sequence is really special is a vampire they play uh, uh, baseball. So that's a cool sequence too. I get to boss around a bunch of guys. Yes! <laughs> the way it should be. She's very enthusiastic. I mean, I guess you guys saw her earlier. She's kind of, she kind of gets. She's very hands-on with things. I mean, she's funny. She's, uh, yeah, she gets very, very energized about things. We were shooting at five o'clock in the morning, freezing cold and raining yesterday, and she's still like, yeah, "Come on, let's do it again." And I'm like, you just say, like, "Oh, I think I've." I think I've done it. <laughs> I think I've pretty much done it. It seems like people are kind of excited about the movie, you know, all the fans. I mean, we have people even out here in the middle of Oregon, like, hanging out, watching, getting the autographs and everything. And I think the best thing that this movie has done is involve Stephanie Meyer, the author, in every aspect of it. I mean, they were really smart about involving her in the script process and pre-production, and she's been up several times in production. So I think the best thing you can do when you're making a, 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 a a book series that has such a fervent fan base, you want to make sure that you're delivering to them the things that they fell in love with with the book. And and I think, you know, in having made a bunch of movies, sometimes, you know, you get involved with a franchise and you go, oh man, okay, vampires, what if they're, you know, space aliens? You know, I mean, you, you, you do those things that film producers often do and studios often do and they start to tinker with it. Well, this is the most pure adaptation that I had ever read. I read the book first and then I read the script and I was like, wow, y'all nailed it. Could 
be good. I've got my fingers crossed. We hope that people like the first one and then we'll think about the next after that. The studio summit is preparing the next uh, you know, series so that they can sort of be ahead of it and make sure that we get the books, you know, made into movies at the at the right age for, you know, the sad thing about vampires is they don't age, so Edward's got to remain the same age for, the, for, for the, all the books, so we got to shoot them quickly. No, I mean, I don't mind the cold. Uh, I don't mind it at all. I like Oregon. I think I'm going to come back here for a while. Everybody, thank you very much. And I think people are going to like it. I am Rob Pattinson. Um, I'm playing Edward Cullen. I hadn't read the books before, so it's not like I had a, an opinion. I mean, I had to just formulate my own idea of. Uh, who the guy is anyway. I guess sometimes it, it means a little bit more pressure, but I mean, there's no point in acknowledging uh, what other people really think about it. Uh, you know, you kind of, the only thing you can do is try and find some element of truth to yourself, I guess. And then uh, if you start thinking about what all the fans want and think, and I mean, pretty much all of it initially was like just 100% negative about me, so I mean, I tried to ignore all of that. Just when you read the story, it's all from Bella's perspective, so, you know, um, and she's obsessively in love with him, so uh, she ignores all of his flaws and and um, and things, and, uh, you know, it's like anybody you're in love with, you sort of see past the, the stuff. I mean, Stephanie Meyer gave me this manuscript of um, Midnight Sun, which is Twilight from Edward's perspective. And he just sees himself as the biggest like, moron and, and, uh, and just disgustingly selfish and everything. So like, and then you can kind of weigh up the two, find some kind of compromise for the character, which is, I mean, that's essentially how I saw him anyway. It just, I mean, it's a guy who's just incredibly frustrated and finds this one uh, thing which he can, which is his and he can't keep it safe and uh, and that's uh, and that's almost impossible for him to handle I mean he's not that great a guy at all I mean it's just kind of it's just how she sees him so I mean that's how I'm interpreting it anyway because I mean it's just impossible to play a perfect guy it's cool when I get to do actual vampire stuff though I mean I hardly get to do any vampire stuff <laughs> I mean uh, yeah, I don't get to kill anyone I really want to kill some people and I keep trying to convince them just let me just have one little one little casualty. I mean, I just want to just have just one where it's have to just flip out and just kill a whole crowd. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, but um, I think Ed is, yeah, he's got, he's trying to hide it all the time, which is annoying. He's always trying to maintain looking like a human. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of times where, where I do sort of vampire stuff. Just, yeah, it's fun. I hope, like, what me and Kristen have been doing is making it a lot more serious than your average kind of teen uh even though it's a vampire it's essentially like a teen romance but i mean i've been trying to you know get more of the um serious aspects i mean he's a 108 year old guy who has who's going to live forever and hates himself and this girl i mean i mean when you when you put it the bare facts down he tells her i've killed 40 or 50 people and uh is that you really shouldn't and I, I want to kill you so much. Every single day, every moment I'm with you, I desperately wanted to kill you. And she's like, I don't care, I love you. And it's like, well, <laughs> there's definitely something wrong with her and there's very obviously something wrong with me. And like just trying to get that kind of relationship rather than like just two teenagers who, you know, who, who like each other. The thing about Bella as well, I mean, when you're 17, she's very innocent 17 as well in a lot of ways. She doesn't really know. She doesn't really know herself, and yet she knows that beyond all doubt, she wants this. And that's just very strange to know that when you're so young. Because Ed was such a sort of dominating character. Like Ed, Bella's always falling over and stuff. And Kristen is just so like, like just very strong in reality. Um, so you know, I had to kind of reevaluate how I was going to play it, just in terms of that. Because I mean, she's kind of intimidating. <laughs> so. Uh, 
yeah, that's that's kind of different thing. I mean, I I end up playing like the klutz who messes everything up, and she's like the one who takes control of everything. So there's so much of the story is just so serious, and it's sort of and so kind of uh, melodramatic in a way. I mean, it's literally like life or death all the time, and so it's difficult to get in those periods of lightness. Um, but there, I mean, I mean, they like each other, and it's also such a bizarre situation for for him, especially. I mean, he's like. Like, what am I doing with this like, kid? I'm 108 years old, and, I, and uh, I've fallen in love with this girl who sits next to me in biology. I'm terrible at stunts. I mean, I picked up so many injuries during this, like, during this job. Nothing terrible. The sort of terminal groin chafing and stuff with front harnesses. You always go, like, always wear groin padding if you're a vampire. Like. <laughs>